there ladies and gentlemen welcome to another exciting episode of the 11 bang bang channel i'm your host ethan woods and today we're going to be doing some more testing with smoothbore muskets namely this Pedrozoli brown bass now for those of you who watched uh, my latest episode of Pedrozoli versus military heritage some people thought it came off that i was really hating on the Pedrozoli, and i'm really not this gun is an excellent shooter hence why you're probably going to be seeing it in a lot more testing just because it has such a fast lock time and such a reliable uh, lock on this gun. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be testing the various methods of loading. And we're gonna be doing this at 50 yards in the trees because believe it or not, right now we are in a tornado watch in February. It's a nice balmy 75 degrees and the wind's blowing about 40 miles an hour out there on the plane. So we're gonna do this in the trees. And the different methods of loading we're going to discuss are going to include patched round ball. Uh, paper cartridges, uh, cardboard, wads, just a bunch of different things and see if there really is a whole lot of difference, especially at like 50 yards. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start with our patched round ball. And to do this, I've already got my 200 grain charge poured down the barrel here. I'm going to wet up this uh, patching material in my mouth. That'll help break up the fouling a little bit, hopefully. And that's a fairly tight seal for a smoothbore musket so let's go ahead and get our first five shots off and by the way this will be done from the standing the lock time on this gun is so fast i really don't have a whole lot of time to flinch so it's going to be pretty good it's also going to help kind of show you what it's like in a hunting scenario so let's go ahead and start our five rounds of patch round ball all right let's try our first round 200 grain charge patch round ball 50 yards Oh, I can see where that one hit, about two inches high of where I aimed. <laughs> All right, let's try round two. Not bad, about four inches to the right of that first one. Let's try again. All right, round three. Whoa, that one went way off. That one wasn't. All right, last round. Here we go. That was not as good as I was expecting, but I guarantee you that last one, man, I did not flinch. I don't know what the deal is. All right, guys, I'm not gonna lie. This is not as good as I was hoping for. Uh, this is patched round ball, by the way, 200 grain charge. Round one, like I said, hit about three inches from where I was aiming. Round two was over here. Round three, for some reason, was clear over here. Round four was right there. And round five was right there. And guys, like this one right here, I guarantee you, I was holding right on this thing, did not flinch. That's the accuracy you're expecting kind of with patched round ball out of a Petrozoli Brown Bess with this powder charge. So let's go ahead, we're gonna mark those out and go back and we will try another method of shooting, which is paper cartridge. All right, we're on to our second round. We got our first set of uh, holes marked out and now we are gonna be using the historically accurate British paper cartridges. <laughs> Put a little bit of powder in there. And these ones were made in a hurry, so they're not wanting to open up very good. That's okay, this isn't a speed competition. This is an accuracy test. So we'll really see kind of, if at 50 yards at least, if paper cartridges are that much uh, worse, uh, as everybody says, than the, uh, standard patch round ball so round one <laughs> that was actually a really good shot but i'm not going to count my chickens before they hatch because we know how this whole thing works don't we half cock retrieve your cartridge bite spit prime the pan close 
place the barrel away from you. Go ahead and get the rest of that powder to go down the barrel. Now, get the cartridge in. Retrieve your rammer. Ram home. Place your rammer. And we're ready to fire. All right, round two, the paper cartridge. Round three. I can already tell from right here that our, our uh, accuracy is better with the paper cartridge for some reason. This barrel is getting a little bit warm, to say the least. Alrighty, was this four? Round four, yeah, it's four. Oh, the heat mirage. That was actually a really good pull through. And let's do round five here. Tell us about the 200 grain. Now, we don't care, but that's what it is. That's what this gun likes. Kind of like the there's there. There isn't there. Or was it there? Can't remember if it was there or not there. Maybe it was there there. I'm about to let this gun take a break. It is hot. All right, last round. Paper cartridges. That one I felt like I was a little bit off to the left, but I can see where I hit and I actually hit the bullseye. So let's go ahead and take a look at our paper cartridges here. All right guys, so here is our paper cartridge group. We have one round here. That was our first round. Second round was pretty close to it. Third round was a flyer, fourth round was fairly decent, and the fifth round nicked the bullseye. So what I find funny is, I don't know why, maybe this is just me, but I've noticed it myself personally in just my everyday shooting. I tend to shoot better with paper cartridges out of these muskets than I do with patched round ball. So let's go ahead and go to our next method of loading, which is going to be putting a cardboard wad in between the powder and the ball and a cardboard wad on top of the ball and see if we get any better or worse results. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and use these little cardboard wads. I like to split these in half. These are from Track of the Wolf and I've already poured my 200 grain charge. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna put one of these down and we're gonna put it on the powder. Now, personally, I don't like doing this. It feels wrong to me, but there are a lot of people out there who do do this and we'll see if there's any merit to it. Then you put your ball on top of that cardboard wad and then we put one on top and see how well she works. Round one of two wads above and below the ball. All right, round two. Round three. Yeah. 
<laughs> Nothing like black powder smoke. Remember how I said that we were in a tornado watch? Well, now we know why. It was nice and sunshiny when we came out here. Not so much anymore. Round four. Oh, the heat mirage is horrible. Old Dan Tucker was a fine old man, washed his face in the frying pan. Round five. Combed his hair with a wagon wheel. Bad way to go on his head. All right, guys, this is why I don't actually like using the cardboard of wads on top and below the powder. So what we have here is we have uh, one hit, two hits, three hits, so those are fairly decent. One, two, three, all right here. Four, and then, eh, five. But uh, yeah, I've always heard that wadding below or on the powder and on the ball is not generally a good idea, and I think now it's kind of obvious why. All right, let's go on to our next one, which is ball on powder, wad on top. All right, so I'm just gonna use some uh, paper here, 200 grains of powder, and uh, oh, it's not what I'm wanting. 200 grains of powder and the ball on the powder itself. So let's go ahead and try that. And for those of you worrying, no, I would not usually suggest using paper. However, uh, we got a storm rolling in here real quick and I'm gonna, we're about to get rained on. So I think we're safe. Not only that, we're in kind of a lower wind area right here. It should be safe. We're keeping a pretty good eye out on the range too. So let's go ahead and load that down the tube. Ball on powder, wad on ball. That was actually a beautiful follow through. If that one, if that one didn't hit the bullseye, and I see where it hit, and it actually didn't hit the bullseye, it was just right under it. Uh, that one, I will tell you, was not on me because that was a beautiful, beautiful shot. That is pretty. I put that ball right on top of that last one. All right, this is round four. I'm starting to think we got a winner here. <laughs> wow. Oh, I hope my fifth round doesn't throw it. Found a cough, a cough drop wrapper. It's going down range too. We're gonna cure the enemy of the whooping cough. Is this, round five? this is the fifth and final round of this set. And I hope I don't mess it up. You want some powder, good man? I would appreciate some powder. Thank okay. you, good sir. <laughs> yeah. Homemade powder. Homemade powder and fifth and final round. Yes, that's a good group. Let's go take a look. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is our best group we've had so far. So here is round one. Round two actually hit, you can actually see there's already a hole there, but you can see it's widened out, it's egged out towards the bottom of this side. So there's our second round. One, two, three, actually three, four, five. And I can cover it with my hand, basically. I can at least touch all the holes with my hand. So that is by far our best group today. And it kind of does go to show that yes, if you don't put that, if you don't put anything between the powder and the ball, and I've noticed this too, you get more accurate shooting. So we're gonna go ahead and mark these and do our final set, which is just ball and powder, no wadding, called running ball. All right, we are on our final set here, and that is going to be with 200 grains of powder and a ball, and that's it. This is called running ball. Let's go ahead and give her a try here. Not bad. All right guys, that storm is rolling in. It is getting dark out here. So we're gonna have to hurry. Round two. I think we're gonna have another winner here, guys. I hear a lot of people saying that you can't hit anything if you're just running ball. 
but uh, I just put that second round right next to that first round. So maybe, you never know. And just to show you guys, prove that I'm not cheating, I'm not using a patch or anything. Ball, powder, powder. And let's see here, let's try this again. Ball goes down the pow on the powder, but in prime, that barrel is piping hot. That might be enough powder. Right, let's go ahead and see what we can do with round four. Right, fifth and final round. <laughs> well, let's go see what we got. Okay guys, here's our fifth and final group. Round one, right there. Round two, right there. Three, four, and five. Not quite as small as I was getting whenever I was putting wadding down on top. Uh, probably, yeah, this is, but it's still one of our better groups. Like I can almost get all of it, uh, touch it all with one hand. And that is, again, kind of dispelling a myth that you literally can't hit anything if you're just running ball down the barrel without patch. So, okay. I guess that tells us what we need to know. So as always, thank you for watching. Trust in God and keep your powder dry. Bye.